In this video, we're gonna be answering all of your period and puberty questions that you asked us on Instagram. So shall we get started, girls? Yeah. Ready? What's good, Fizz fam? Hi. So loads of you guys have asked us to do this video. You all really enjoyed the video where we made a period kit, emergency kit, which has just reminded me, we still haven't announced the giveaway winner for the period kit, which contains all of our top and favorite period and puberty essentials. We will be choosing the winner at the end of this video, so stick around for that but first of all let's get straight on into your questions thank you so much for asking them there have been so many questions but i've picked the ones which i think would be the most helpful and the most commonly asked questions so out of all of us obviously i'm a mum of four i've had four babies i've had lots of periods of obviously being through puberty mia if you didn't know is 18 years old she Bye. obviously has started <laughs> puberty and sienna is now 12 years old and she's coming to that age where she is going to be going through puberty and growing up as well so this video is going to be quite good because there's all different experiences and age ranges coming from us Sienna also wants to learn and get some tips as well don't mm -hmm. you although she has learned a lot about PBE over the last few years haven't mm -hmm. you but maybe this is going to be helpful for some of you because you're of all different age ranges and this is completely natural and normal so let's just relax enjoy it fizz fam get and let's have a girly conversation <laughs> we're all wearing pink as well aren't yeah. we to make it feel a little bit more feminine and relax. So who wants, do you wanna be the questions here? Yeah, do you wanna be the, the question reader? I'll be the questioner. Shoros Johnson said, what age did you get your period? I got my period when I was 12 years old and the buzz is going. So um, <laughs> you answer me for you and I'll go and answer the door. Okay. I also got my period at 12. I think I was like exactly 12 and a half. Um, I've just turned 12, I haven't got it yet. No, but everybody's bodies develop at different times. Like I know of loads of my friends that didn't start and until they were like 15, 16. I know girls that started even younger than me, so everybody's bodies develop at different times. Even if you're related to someone, doesn't necessarily mean that your body is gonna develop in the exact same way that theirs did because every body is different. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I just had to answer the door, sorry. Maddie said, how does Sienna feel about getting a period? Will she vlog it when it happens? I don't know if I'll necessarily like vlog it when it happens. I mean, I'm not really sure yet. I'm kind of looking forward to it a bit, but a bit nervous too. Oh, that's really sweet. I think Mia, if you don't know this guys, if you're new to the channel, Mia started her period and then we were vlogging that day. We were gonna go out and do like a shopping video or something. And then we Mia picked have the- a girly day. Yeah, and then Mia picked the camera up and then she like told me on camera that she know, started her period. But that was when we used to do daily videos every single day. So, cause our life isn't really like that. We don't film every single day. I'm not even sure if like you'd pick the camera up yeah. to say like we don't always- Like I feel like we might say it on camera, but maybe not like maybe when I first but tell mum, I might not tell you on camera. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to, you know, you don't have yeah. to do that. That was like something me that wanted was, to do. I just wanted to do it because I thought it might be really helpful for mm -hmm. other yeah. girls to watch that because I knew that even though me and mum have a really good relationship talking about puberty, it was still really scary because it just is a big deal. Maybe if we did a period video like this, you could talk about it, but I don't yeah. really know if, yeah. that's like up to you really, isn't yeah. it? Don't feel any pressure to do right. that. <laughs> Jazz said, what would be the best thing to do if your period leaked through clothes in public? Oh, because this happened to me at the weekend when I was out with dad, and now I'm actually in my period and I was wearing a white satin skirt. Oh no. I know loads of you are thinking, what the heck was I doing wearing white? A good tip is don't wear white when you know you're gonna be on your period. But my tampon stopped working. Even though I changed it a lot throughout the day, it um, my period is like really heavy on the first two days and the, the tampon failed. So when I got back to the hotel, it had all leaked through and it was all my skirt and knickers. What I did back in the hotel, a really good tip is I immediately went to the sink and I got a bar of soap and then under the running tap of like mild sort of warm water, I cleaned up with a bar of soap. Soap works amazing by the way, guys. But obviously if you're out in public, what do you do? I guess you just have to run home. <laughs> or if you have like no. a jacket. Then yeah, that's what I was going to say. If you have a jacket or if one of your friends have a jacket. Yeah. That is probably the best thing you can do. But I think a number one tip if you're on your period and you're worried about leaks or if you think you're about to come in your period, wear period knickers. Get a pair of period pants 
or get several pairs and then leading up to your period do that and if you think you're going to be out all day and you might you know have a leak i think they're just a really foolproof so you just wear black jeans and black jeans, jeans yeah like if like you do have a leak and people see it i don't think anyone's gonna be like ha ha or like make a big no, deal of it most people will just really i reckon most people will look away <laughs> no or people will that, like yeah. have empathy for you and they'll care about you so don't yeah. if it does happen like just you're just gonna have to view it as one of those stories that you can laugh about a couple of months later Later. Ashley Scarlett said, are tampons painful? No, they're not supposed to be, are they? No, they shouldn't be painful. No. They're only painful if you're not using them right. Or maybe if you're not bleeding enough. Yeah, if you, because yeah. Because you need to have like a reasonable amount of blood to actually be able to use a tampon. Obviously you get different sizes of tampons for mm -hmm. different absorbencies as well. So maybe you're using the wrong absorbency. Yeah, because if like you haven't got much blood coming out, it can be a bit dry and like it can yeah, that rub would just be irritating. and chafe, yeah, irritating. So it shouldn't, so I think it's more of a case of that you need to learn how to apply it properly and then also maybe like have practice a bit. And there's probably gonna be a lot of YouTube videos online and demonstrations like you know like card illustrated what do you call it like a well, cartoon in the, in in the, the pack the yeah there's pack, diagrams it does explain it but sometimes it's easier to watch a video about it but practice is like actually doing it and practicing can help as well but it shouldn't be painful they're not designed like that and millions of women use them all over the world but i think if it More ever than millions. but it has happened with me like i've I've used a tampon and it hurts a bit and I'm like right I have to reapply it and sometimes then that tampon you have to throw away and get a new one out which is a bit annoying yeah. but yeah. Or sometimes when I've borrowed like another person's tampons and they weren't my absorbency then that can be a bit uncomfortable. And do you know which tampons I find hurt or I get wrong is the applicator ones. I prefer non-applicator. Mm. I find those are easier but a lot some women or some young girls you know they don't like using those yeah. but I, I get along better with those. I feel like the cardboard bit and everything is kind of awkward and comfortable. And, un and uncomfortable for me. But. Grace Matt said, what age do cherries start to grow? Oh, that's a good <laughs> question. I think it's a bit like what age do you start your period or what's the normal age? And it, it varies for everybody. I think I started puby. I started, which, which doesn't mean your period. It literally means the beginning of it when your hormones start changing. And I was around about 10 and I think I started noticing some changes on my chest when I was 10 years old. But I don't think you fully get actual like boobs until you're like a lot older, like a couple of years later. Yeah, I mean boobs take forever to grow. Yeah. It takes like five or six years, obviously it depends on the person. But, but be, some people naturally have very small chests, so the boobs may seem to take seemingly to take longer but you're just gonna have a smaller chest and some girls have larger boobs so therefore their boobs might seem to grow seems like they've grown quicker yeah, if that makes true. sense as well yeah. there's all different like you can end up any different size but then they can also like, yeah. go through growth spurts or they could grow really yeah. slowly like. it's very unique for everybody yeah. and there's like i said there's no rush or any like there's not a set time frame for it so just trust your body that it's like growing in the way it's supposed to be and just enjoy life and try not to get too hung up on comparing yourself to others. Riri said, when I get my period, how should I tell my mum? Well, I feel like you're a good person for asking this. Okay, so I'd probably say it depends on like your relationship with your mum about puberty. Like hopefully you've been speaking to her a bit about it. But if you haven't, it doesn't like really matter because obviously your mum has gone through this as well. So just try to remind yourself of that, that she definitely understands how you feel because she has literally been through the same thing. But yeah, you could just tell her in person, maybe if you're having like some one-on-one -on -one time with her, maybe don't tell her like if she's really busy because then she might not be able to pay you enough attention. Um, you might catch her off guard. Yeah, she but, might be surprised. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like, it. sorry to interrupt, but I feel like most moms would just be really happy if you did yeah. approach them a lot. You'd be surprised your parents are probably like going to be really flat that you've came to them. So I feel like especially when you get, you become a teen, Teenager, they your parents kind of start feeling like they they might not feel like they're as close to you anymore because you're starting to get your own life now and your own like independence if that makes sense. So I feel like your parents, like your mum, would just be so happy that you approached her. To be honest, saying that like parents are still humans and like some parents, like some mums, might feel a little bit uncomfortable around the topic of puberty because it's like in some cultures and societies when your child is growing up. For some parents, they might find it it's a new thing for them as well to go through. If that makes sense, isn't it? Yeah. When your children are growing up for the first time, it's like a first experience for your parents. So it's going to be fine. And if not, if you feel like you can't talk to your mum, you can talk to an aunt, a sister, maybe one of your friend's older sisters even, or like even a teacher at school there. 
is there are people out there you can speak to or even you'll be surprised but even some dads are really good and practical exactly. to talk to yeah there's no reason why you can't yeah. tell your dad about it if you're really nervous maybe about bringing it up like verbally because that can be quite a big deal maybe you could just make it obvious that you've started your period like i don't know putting pads out on the side in your room or even like in the kitchen or somewhere obviously they're gonna notice yes, and they'll be like idea. oh what are these pads and then it just brings up the conversation for yeah. you that would make it so much easier or if you're really really nervous you could even like text them or write them a note yeah about i was gonna it. say that i i just think communication is the most important thing and yeah and you can't and just just speaking to your parents is the way to solve it, really. The Pet Ground said, Is it normal to feel good one day and horrible the next? P.S. Love you guys. I guess it's just part of life that your moods will change. Especially as females, we have our hormones change throughout the whole the cycle. Like, Sienna, I think I've noticed it with you and we've talked about it, but I feel like even your moods have changed now. Like, when you got to around about 10 or 11, I started noticing you getting a bit moody and things. <laughs> Like, do you notice? A, can you feel a difference? Or have you not got that I mean, awareness? I don't really remember, like, when I was eight, nine, like, how I felt. Yeah, because Sienna's a bit more, like, Sienna never used to be like this, but she's got more argumentative with me and a little bit, like, attitude -y, which <laughs> I was like, I feel like Sienna, I can tell that Sienna's growing a bit. But for me, when I'm on my period, guys, I can get really moody. Like, especially the couple of days before my period, I'm really snappy and irritated. And sometimes you're just like, whoa, I can definitely tell mum is on yeah, her period. Yeah, I'm like, there's something up with her. <laughs> Yeah, and it's completely normal. But or it could even just be something about like you haven't eaten enough that day or you're tired. Yeah. Or obviously it can be your hormones changing or it can even be like a combo of loads of different things that changes your mood. Usually it is like little things combined together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in general, when you start puberty, you are going to experience a sort of roller coaster of emotions and that is completely normal. And um, it will settle down as you get older and it's important to kind of remember that emotions come and go and they don't define you. Some days you might feel a bit sad and low, some days you might feel really emotional and some days you'll feel really on a high. Even now as an adult, when it's coming up to my period, I do notice a change in my emotions and I just have to have that self-awareness like, oh, I'm coming up to my period, this is not like my life. Because it's really hard, so, especially when you're a teenager, I feel like you feel all these emotions and these you have all these thoughts and you kind of think, oh, this is what life is. Does that make sense? Yeah. But emotions do come and go. But of course, there are a lot of things that you can do to help regulate them. Because obviously some people can experience extreme emotions, if that makes sense. If you do feel like they're really, really bad, like that you obviously might, there are a lot of things you can do in your lifestyle to improve it, like making sure you're getting enough sleep. Are you getting enough exercise? Are you eating well? Are you eating too much sugar, which can give you crashes and things? Are you going out in nature a lot? There's a lot of things you can do to help balance them and make them a little bit more stable. Don't you agree, Mia? Yeah. If definitely. you have a lot of late nights and you end up eating loads I know, of sugar, exactly. it can make you feel like you might feel yeah. like you want to eat a whole bag of sweets, but that doesn't make you feel good in the long run. So like kind of go mm. for more nurturing foods, you know, like, like chocolate coated nuts or healthy, nice, of course, tasty snacks, yeah. but not ones that are gonna leave your body depleted afterwards and you have like lots of sugar crashes which can make you feel worse. I love going for long walks. Yeah, it clears your head, yeah. you'll be surprised. Georgia said, what will Sienna do when she gets her period and she has to go to gymnastics? P.S. Love your vlogs. Thank you. I mean, I'm not necessarily sure. With gymnastics, you like, you don't have to just wear a leotard, like you can wear shorts as well. So I wouldn't necessarily like be forced to wear like a tan tampon or anything. I haven't really thought of it that deeply. I mean, you don't even have to wear like a leotard and shorts. You can just wear like shorts and like a, a top or anything. If I like go and do some movement, it does actually help. It yeah. helps clear my head and it helps from me some like stagnant energy in me. <laughs> Amy Lou Morris said, how can I overcome the fear of using a tampon? I've had my period since 15, now I'm 22. I think the main thing to overcome the fear is to realize about how many women use it i mean if you don't want to use the tampon that doesn't matter but at the same time you don't have every to. woman that uses a tampon had to go through that first few times of trying to use it and it was scary for everyone so maybe just ask your some of your friends about it or your mom or your sister or whatever realize you could try it once and then maybe if you really hate it you never have to go back to it it doesn't matter that much even if you can try you it and you don't like it can you remember my cousin she's one year younger than me and she, when you made that video mia made a video on her channel mia's life and it was how to use a tampon or something i talked about my first time using a tampon yeah experience. and she messaged me or you and said thank you for that video 
even though she'd had a baby and she was like in her was she in her late twenties? She like messaged that. me and said that your video helped her. That was really. So sweet. there's a lot of other women out there yeah. who've even had babies and you know they're married and they uh, the idea of a tampon really frightens them, which is strange because a baby coming out of your your privates is Obviously, to me a, it's a bigger way more deal scary. than using yeah. a tampon. And there are other alternatives to tampons as well. So like maybe that period can liquors. Some research into that. You can get yeah. some amazing organic, like really nice natural um, pads. There's so many options out there. You don't have to, but I think knowing that you could resort to a tampon when needed, like when you're on holiday, you go swimming or something, can be helpful yeah. to know that you've got that as a backup. So I would suggest us. Maybe being a bit relaxed and just trying it and viewing it how Mia is when she she physically can't swallow a tablet, can you? No. And I know what it is because when yeah. I I think it's like you go like that and you think it's going to get stuck. So I think maybe you just have to do count the one two yeah. three method. Go one two three and then do it. Little Wolf said, "Are stretch marks normal?" Yeah, I think they are, aren't they? When yeah, you're growing up, totally normal. We usually get stretch Majority marks. Of people have it when you grow, like on your breasts or thighs or stomach, when you've like put weight on growing because you can grow quite relatively fast, and also when you're pregnant as well and when you're yeah. breastfeeding in terms of are they normal it is a normal kind of thing to happen not everybody gets them some people can get mild ones some people can get severe ones there are some things that you can obviously do to help they do people a lot of people say suggesting oils and things in the skin and eating healthy and make sure you get lots of healthy fats but sometimes like your skin when it's put under a demand of stretching the collagen sort of breaks I think that's the science behind it and like there's not much you can do but over time they do fade and you just kind of have to love them and accept them a lot of people have them a yeah. lot of people I've got yeah. them I've got them on my breasts my stomach my thighs my buttocks and men can get them as well you know cellulite yeah. as well that's another one which people ask about I think there are some things that you can do to prevent cellulite even very skinny supermodels can have cellulite as well Libby Allen said what do you recommend when shaving your legs in the goodie bag we actually have I'd say this is your probably favourite brand as well, Estrid. Yeah. I really recommend this because it has basically, it's vegan and the ingredients on the razor blade are really nourishing. It's like shea butter and things and it doesn't irritate my skin. So that's what I use on my legs. It's eco-friendly mm -hmm. as well. Sorry, I scratched Why? you. I recommend using that and I don't even use shave and foam because it works really well. But you just have to make sure that your legs are wet. Don't dry shave. I tried that when I was a teenager and it irritated my skin. I always shave like... After I've been in the shower for a while or in yeah. the bath, I think it's good to let your legs soak Soften a bit. And soak. So then the hair is like softer and it's a lot easier yeah. to trim. But the estrogen is good. I use it on my armpits, um, I use it on my legs, and it that works really, really well. If you feel like you're starting to get some ingrown hairs or your skin feels a bit dry, I just leave it a couple of days to let the skin sort of heal a bit also afterwards i like putting on some nice natural oils like almond oil or jojoba i'm saying that a bit wrong and that can like moisturize your skin afterwards nadia is great said so do you girls use pads or tampons i mostly use tampons or period pants like especially at night time i'll use period pants um or i'll use panty liners i really don't get along that well with like the standard like plasticky mm -hmm. sort of pads or whatever the made out of cotton or whatever i personally find them quite uncomfortable so i don't often use them i'll only use them if it's like a last resort or something tampons when i go out but period pants when i'm at home and then if we're traveling i don't really bring period pants because they're kind of a bit awkward to use unless yeah. you have access to washing machine then i'll then i'll use a lot of pads and stuff but yeah. it's nice i have tried a menstrual cup you know the moon cup things but i've never really got along with them i find them very uncomfortable and awkward to use i know other people do get along with them but i don't but maybe try it for yourself I have yeah. never tried it. And then when you're at the end of your period and you just kind of got that light kind of bloody bit, you know, when it's kind of like you're at the end but you're not, I'll put a panty liner. Yes. I'll yeah. use a panty liner and then it's a little backup so you just don't soil, soil your knickers because you think, oh, I've stopped my period. You'll go through the whole day and then you'll stain your, your knickers and you're like, yeah. oh, darn it. And I always, we always go for brands now because there's so many different brands out there now. We go for the ones for like the organic cotton or bamboo because it's much more gentler and kinder for your skin and just generally yeah. healthier. And same with tampons, don't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so go organic where possible. Yeah, my main tip is I just always make sure I'm wearing dark colored underwear and usually I'll opt for like my thicker underwear. And then yeah. also try and wear like dark colored trousers. I wear dark colored cargoes and then I just have no worries. Or if you really want to be, if you really like me and you're risking you wearing a satin skirt, 
what I should have done, I should have worn my tampon and then as an, a backup, maybe a I should have had, I should have had a panty liner or maybe like you can get with period pants, you can get ones which are like the smoothing ones where they mm -hmm. don't show like, what do you call it? Those oh, seamless ones, seamless. seamless. Yeah. You can get, I, you can get um, like nude colored seamless and they're kind of lighter flow. Yeah, so they're, so they're not for like a backup. Yeah, I should have had, yeah. I should have done that. If you like going out for an evening meal, or, you know, a fancy occasion, and you really want to wear like a white dress, mm -hmm. try and get some really thin, seamless period pants, and then use like a tampon or something yeah. if you want. Yeah, as well. Mia Star, nice name, <laughs> said how to reduce period cramps without painkillers. I think you've been having a lot of period cramps lately, haven't you? Yeah, I, the main thing I would recommend is a hot water bottle. I think mm -hmm. it She transforms. sleeps with one every night. Well, not every night, but most nights just because I like having it even if I'm not in pain. But if you're in pain at all, a hot water bottle that she can help it so much. But obviously you can't really have a hot water bottle if you're like walking around. So like my main thing is if I'm really in pain, I'll try and rest if I can. But yeah. I guess if you Listen can't to your rest, body. chocolate helps. Yeah, apparently Good quality. magnesium. So that's in like dark chocolate. Also get some magnesium, have a bath of magnesium flakes. Yeah. That can help. Uh, can yeah. I just say something though to you girls in FizFam? So many of the questions, I swear like 80% of the questions were about period cramps. I feel like mm. it's a massive big deal. Now I can't yeah. remember this Mia, can you remember? But when you first started your period, did you have period cramps to begin with? Is that normal? Cause I feel like that's a common thing when you start your periods, they can be very yeah, crampy. Yeah, I do remember my second period ever was really like weird. But my first period was basically like just almost spotting. Yeah. So I didn't really feel any cramps or anything, but I think my second and like, for the first like six months of my period, they were irregular and like yeah. could be really heavy or could be really light or could have really bad cramps or no cramps. So I think it might be common, but I think if you are experiencing really bad ones, you might have to like maybe look into some parts of your lifestyle as well. A bit like your moods, if they're very extreme, I think with period cramps, technically you could say that you sh they're not normal if you know what I mean. Maybe there could be some things you could help to reduce them, because I know when I get very bad period cramps, though it's very rare, but when I do, it's because I'm, I'm going through a period of my life where I'm really stressed, or yeah. like I'm doing stressful things to my body. So it might not necessarily be that I'm feeling stressed, but we're doing loads of traveling and I've got jet lag. It could be a sign lag. that your body is a little bit out of balance. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. So like, if you're experiencing really bad cramps, maybe like you should like speak to someone like a specialist, and see if there's anything that you could do to alleviate it in your lifestyle, just because like, I don't feel like we should be having to go through that as women. Yeah. Maybe on the first day of your period, it might be more crampier, because it's the first day and you're starting yeah. to shed the blood. So like, listen to your body and take it easy. And I know not everybody could like maybe spend the day in bed, and like, to be honest, I feel like I said, a walk can do a load of good, but if you've got yeah. like a day of school or you've got something very important to do that day, I think just be really kind to yourself that day and try and, Take it slowly if you can and eat Try healthily. Try and wear comf something that comfy, you feel comfortable in. Nice natural materials on your body and maybe like some nice like herbal teas and things like that yeah. can help and have a hot water bottle. And I think you can also sometimes get those little heated pads that you can yeah, take out Yeah, that's what you. I was thinking, because obviously those. you can't really take a big hot water bottle out with No. You. But I think there are like heat pads and stuff you can get which are yeah. a lot more uh, portable. <laughs> and there might be some things that you can, like some vitamins and supplements you can take yeah. as well around that time to help support you. I think, I don't know, I don't, I can't think of them on the top of my head, but like if you saw a specialist or you went into a nice health food shop, then like you look in the supplement bit, there might be some supplements as well for periods and things like that that can help support it and balance out your hormones. The next person said, can you swim while on your period? Yes, you can swim. Yeah, of course. And I think you can the do anything on yeah, your period. You don't need to let it hold you back. Like, although of course, if you want to relax and listen to your body, do it. But if you love swimming and you really want to go, of course you can go. And I think the number one like thing people think of to go swimming is using a tampon. But if you don't want to use a tampon, I'm sure now there are some like period pant swimming wear. There is, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I think there's bikinis and like swimsuits and stuff, especially like if you're really into swimming. Yeah. I probably would recommend investing in that, especially if you don't want 
want to use tampons. It's exciting, Sienna. Like, you, you're next. Yeah. You're going to be starting your period in a time when there's just so much choice. Hattie said, I am 15 without my period, and so should I be worried about that? By the way, I love your videos. Kind of like what we talked about before, isn't it? Yeah, really? I mean, 15 is a normal age to start or not start your period. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't really matter when you start. Like, it won't affect you as an adult when you start no. as a teenager or you know early tween i mean so if yeah, you feel happy and like, healthy womanless. yeah if you're happy yeah. and healthy there's nothing to worry about i think you told me that my sister didn't start until she was 17. yeah i yeah. think harriet told me she didn't start until she was in her late teens yeah, yeah. i was 12 so. and she was late teens and we're sisters so and harriet i did know like you know i talk about maturity i think when me and harriet there's a bit of difference in our maturity when we we're teens i think i was a lot more grown up than harriet when i was 12. so i think therefore she started her periods a lot later than me so i just like what i'm saying yeah. that my theory in my opinion it's just a theory i don't know if it's a definite fact or not but like i just think some... just something you've observed yeah yeah that, i just yeah. wonder if people's maturity makes a difference but then there's probably loads of cases where that hasn't worked yeah. as well h cash in said have you ever tried a menstrual cup if so how was it we did speak about this yeah. earlier and no i haven't i have and i didn't get along with it but i know lots of other women do because it's very like eco-friendly but i just found it was messy and awkward i was aching when i used it did you only try it like once or... no i've tried it so many times i've even oh. tried i've even tried two different types of brands and i've never ever got along with it there's a lot of different brands out there but sometimes you might just have to like try Experiment. it glamorous said how to cope with pressure to look a certain way i.e body shape such a good question because i think it probably affects everyone it affects women my age it affects girls your age especially on instagram and social media now we're yeah. really exposed to a lot of images of other people looking their best or taking photographs of themselves in their best poses a lot of photoshop shopping happens yeah. doesn't it like tiktok obviously all the videos there are like edited. and like even yeah. we're we're the same here we will off quite often only share a picture of ourselves in the best pose the best lighting the best yeah. makeup the best and even phones nowadays every phone when it takes a photo of you i think there's some kind of inbuilt like thing in it where it, it makes doesn't you look, look a bit like better life. do you know what i mean yeah i don't sure. have i don't have all this stuff turned up on my camera but I do think that like a lot of people, like even on Instagram, there's like some kind of changes. Everybody has their own insecurities. And I've heard this so many times from books I've read or things like that from like beauticians. They say that they're the clients who come in who are like deemed the most beautiful in society, they're the ones with the most insecurities. I think that can sometimes make you feel a little better, bit better just knowing that everyone's human and that. Life isn't just about like, Obviously it is important that you feel happy with how you look and like you like your body but it's not just about like what you look like there's loads of other important things yeah so if you like study something too much you're just like don't do that like for example <laughs> yeah. if you look at knees yeah if you just glance at a knee you're just oh, like oh it's a knee yeah. but if you stare at a knee too long knees are really strange things but they're just on it like they're just a part of the human body, they're normal. We're seeing yeah. these images of people looking the absolute best with all filters on and it's warping our minds and we're now starting to not really know like what a natural face looks like and that and spend less time looking in the mirrors is probably good. Yeah. Get rid of the Stop mirrors. You know the mirrors where they zoom up really close? If you look in those mirrors you can start to hate your skin oh, and I think your like skin's those. wrong. You know when you see every pore and bump and that? Just get rid of that mirror and then the full length mirror that you're looking in maybe you should just like look limit how much you look in it because you you'll be surprised how many like checks you can do in a mirror each day devon said how do you know what period pads you need by the way love all your videos so you get different period pads you get ones for nighttime and one for daytime obviously the nighttime ones are meant for nighttime because they're longer and um, I think they also tend to be a bit wider. So that means when you're like rolling around in your bed and obviously you're just wearing pajamas anyway, so it doesn't matter. Like, like it just makes you feel a bit more comfortable. And then in daytime ones, you get different absorbencies as well. So if your period is heavy and you kind of can tell just by experimenting with different pads, you'll slowly learn what your absorbency is because obviously everyone's different. And also your absorbency can change throughout your period. And that's important to remember just because you need heavy pads at the beginning of your period doesn't mean that you're gonna need them at the end of your period. Obviously you can just kind of tell where you might be roughly on the um, absorbency scale, but also it can vary period to period. I got a period kit which came with loads of different 
yeah, like individual things. Like it came with one of each type of tampon and different absorbencies and one of each type of pad, yeah. different absorbencies. Then you don't have to keep buying a whole pack of them. Or maybe you could just ask your mum or your friends, see what absorbencies they use, ask if you can borrow one of their pads and just experiment before that way. You into, before you know it, you'll get into the flow, no pun intended, yeah. and, you'll, and you'll know what is right. Chelson said, what products would you recommend to help get rid of pimples and acne? I'll probably, um, do you, I'm gonna say something first. Go on then. It's probably use less products, yeah. don't you think? Because people can get used to, I think using a lot of products on your skin can make it worse, would you agree? Yeah, I think if you're using low of different products and they're just like random ones that you think might help I don't think you should like overload your skin like just try and let your yeah. skin breathe as much as it can try and I'm gonna go and get that book I'll show the yeah. fifth family's book because basically a lot of um, acne products especially the ones in like the supermarkets they can really aggravate it and make it worse can't they yeah here. in the long term especially but one thing we have been using is a can of like mineral water and that's basically after you wash your face then you spray your face with that this is obviously 100% natural because it's just water but the only difference is, is obviously tap water doesn't have minerals and it can be quite chemically and it can strip your skin from the oils and like the minerals and stuff that your yeah. skin needs so spraying some of that on your face could really help I think what I do because if I overuse products I can get a breakout so I remove my makeup I use an oil, a natural oil based cleanser, which you'd be surprised, you might think that makes your skin more greasy, but it's, it really removes the makeup without drying out. It's the drying out which yeah. can make you have more acne. Yeah. And then I use a, one of those makeup eraser wipes as well with nice warm water. And then that's what I used to take my makeup off with. But this yeah. book, if you want to learn any more about skin health, this is called Perfect Skin, Unlocking the Secret by Alexandra Soverell. And she's got a nice holistic approach. And like even Vogue magazine says that she's a miracle worker. So she's got a lot of um, good recommendations. Yeah. And I've had a face shot at her place and there's a lot of natural ingredients. And she really works on keeping the skin healthy in the long term. So that might be a good book to read for anybody who wants to. And not the secrets. Yeah, not the secrets of the skin. Or, and just to learn why some products can make your skin worse in the long run and you can get stuck in a, like, a vicious cycle with them. Anna said, what to do if you don't have anything in public and there are no shops around? I mean, you could get a wad of toilet roll. I've case. done that before. Ask a friend or even just ask a random lady like in the toilets yeah. or around the toilets. I think I've done that before as well. I needed a pad or maybe I'm sure people have asked. I think people have asked me yeah. for pads before. Yeah. It's just a normal thing. So like you should you could, Or maybe you could go most nearby doctor surgery even. But yeah, if there's no shops around, it kind of sounds like you're in the middle of nowhere. And like yeah. there might not even be public toilets. So I guess you're just going to have to get loads of leaves. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, yeah, just go to the toilet, ask someone. If not, you may yeah. just have to go home or, or find a shop, won't you? I, I guess you've just got to, yeah. you've got to deal with the guess You might just is, have to accept that you've got to free breathe bleed for a little bit yeah and don't panic about it and to be honest you'll be surprised there is people won't even know and anyways. there won't be that much but unless you're like one of these people have really really heavy flow like it probably won't be that bad i've i've mm. uh, i've been out and about before and um i haven't had any pads or tampons and when i got home my knickers were soiled but it wasn't like gushing out or anything like that happens to me at just rock feel climbing. bad for your trousers <laughs> yeah i don't i hadn't realized i'd started my period or maybe it was like at the very end of my period i can't quite remember but basically i came home but i had been home for a while and then i went to the toilet and i realized that there was actually a stain on like my bright blue cargo so you definitely would have seen it and the thing is about climbing obviously you're up high oh no oh. so and it's like not like normal stay. walking around <laughs> Like climbing it climber. really <laughs> it's great oh no so guys are you ready to find out who is going to be the winner <gasps> of this period kit giveaway so excited. thank you guys so what we did we asked you to share one of your embarrassing stories a bit like me as rock climbing one <laughs> and so many of you guys were so open and shared which was amazing i'm so happy to hear that and then in the comments those of you also have said that you've played that video for your students and they love that that Aww. we're sharing about periods and how helpful it is. So it's really nice for us to get that feedback from you guys as well. And I actually really, really enjoy making these videos, don't you? Yeah. I find it's really nice and girly and fun to sit down, get to chat with you Fizz fam, be with the girls, and it feels like nice just to be like kind of helpful. Let's see which 
is an embarrassing one. Oh, this one has got 24 um, thumbs up. So maybe we should choose you just because a lot of people have liked this. So Ria8440, you said, one time my school decided to have a camp. This was last year and my period tracker had said I was due the week after. So I was like, sweet, I'm all good. Anyway, I was wearing white and I felt a leak and assumed it was probably just hormones. I continued chatting with my friend. This bus trip was about three hours. You can only imagine how I felt when I stood up. Anyway, no. long story short, I stood up and bled in a bus with all people in my grade and I didn't have a jumper either. 10 out of 10, most embarrassing school day of my life. Anyway, so much for reading. The kit looks amazing and I've never had one before. You're such an amazing, beautiful group of girls and I hope all the best of luck to anyone else. That sounds really, really humiliating. Yeah. But at the same time, don't worry, all the other girls on the bus probably really felt for you. We've all been there before. It happened to mm. me at the weekend just now. Did admit in my white skirt. So yeah. you are going to be the winner of the giveaway. So send us a message of your Instagram and then we can DM you on there and then we can arrange how to send this to you. But thank you so much everyone for watching this video. If you'd like any more period puberty videos, comment down below also share some more of your embarrassing stories any period tips anything that you think would be useful to share with other girls and to normalize and break down the taboo of periods being like weird and something you shouldn't talk about we love you so much love you Bye. Bye.